Many authors are told to never use adverbs, but they aren't told to never use adverbs in a way that helps them make better word choices. So today I want to share why creative writers shouldn't use adverbs most of the time. The problem with adverbs is many writers use them as a crutch in place of more in-depth description. This is why they're told to never use them. But there are some situations when an adverb might be the best choice. So today we're going to talk about both those situations and what an adverb is. This is Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. Let's start with understanding adverbs, definition, and examples. Adverbs are words that modify a verb or an adjective. The most commonly overused ones in creative writing are adverbs that end in ly. Here's an example of those. No, he said angrily. Welcome to Macy's, she smiled brightly. In these examples, angrily and brightly are adverbs. Adverbs that don't end in ly or that modify an adjective are not as overused, but can still be a crutch. An example of one of those is the deep red car rolled by. Deep is an adverb because it's modifying the color red, which is modifying the noun. Red is the adjective. While these are okay descriptions, they're not specific enough. Yes, the car is deep red, but maybe a more specific word choice, like maroon or crimson, would convey a stronger mental image. The same thing for those emotions. Maybe showing them would create a more vivid picture in your reader's imagination. Adverbs are often overused in place of more in-depth description like these. So let's talk about adverbs as a crutch, when to avoid them. One of the most common places I see authors overusing adverbs is when it comes to speech tags. A character can never just say something. They have to say it loudly, bitterly, or joyfully, or with some other emotion. The problem with using adverbs in this way is you are telling the reader what the character is feeling instead of showing them through the dialogue, body language, or thoughts. Here's an example. Hi, John. How was your day? Elise said jovially. This sentence is telling the reader Elise is feeling jovial instead of showing her feelings. By choosing more emotionally charged dialogue, the writer could show how Elise is feeling. If I were to rewrite this, I might say, Are you having a wonderful day, John? Elise said. By rephrasing Elise's question, the dialogue becomes more specific and emotional. In this case, jovial is no longer needed. Also, wonderful is a more memorable way of asking someone how their day is going. This makes the character Elise more memorable and her dialogue more memorable to your reader. It's helping develop her voice. When you use adverbs with speech tags as a crutch, instead of putting that emotion in the dialogue, you're dampening the impact of the dialogue and you're making it less specific. This hinders your character's voice and your reader's experience. Adverbs with speech tags are also used to avoid body language and character thoughts, both of which are more impactful than an adverb could ever be. The word angrily can only convey so much. So why not show your character clenching their fists or shoving the words through their closed jaw? Or show them thinking mean things about the person they're talking to? This will convey not only that they're angry, but how angry they are and what anger feels like to them, how their anger might motivate future actions. Reworded dialogue, a physical, bodily response, or thoughts is going to reveal way more than a single adverb ever could. So often it's better to get more specific instead of using that adverb. Another time I see authors overusing adverbs is when they're using them as filler words. These are the equivalent of like or um in speech. They are words we slip in there when we're pausing to think, and sometimes we don't even realize we're doing it. Adverbs that are often used as filler words are words like suddenly, eventually, or swiftly. A character can't just perform an action, they have to do it with one of these adjectives modifying it. Here's an example of an adjective used as a filler word. After banging on the door for over an hour, Anne finally gave up. Here, finally is the adverb, 
it isn't needed because the writer has already shown Anne banging on the door for an hour. Finally, doesn't add new information to the sentence. It only adds an extra word and slows down the pace. The sentence works without it. After banging on the door for over an hour, Anne gave up. When an adverb is used as a filler word, it can be deleted without having any impact on the sentence. That's because this filler adverb isn't adding any new information. It's just slowing the pace of your story. If you've been told that you need to tighten your prose, look for filler adverbs. Look for adverbs that you're using that aren't really adding any new information and eliminate them. This will help you tighten your prose and speed up your pace. Two filler adverbs to avoid almost always are very and really. These words by themselves don't mean anything. They just modify other words. And even though we use them in speech, they have meaning in speech because of the tone and the way we say them. In creative writing, picking a more descriptive word is often the better way to go. So two times you should avoid adverbs are when it comes to speech tags and filler words. Next, let's talk about when you might want to use them. Adverbs aren't all bad when to use adverbs. Anyone who says never use adverbs is doing you a disservice. There are a few situations when adverbs are necessary. One of these places is your back cover copy. You have limited space there, so sometimes you have to use an adverb to be efficient. On the back cover of Kevin Hearn's Hounded, there's an adverb in the first sentence. Here's that sentence. Atticus O'Sullivan, last of the Druids, lives peacefully in Arizona, running an occult bookshop and shapeshifting in his spare time to hunt with his Irish wolfhound. Later, Hearn explains that a god is after one of Atticus's possessions and shatters this peacefulness. It's important that the reader knows before they get to the god part that Atticus was peaceful before, but they don't need any details about that peace. This is why an adverb works here. It's not only useful, it's necessary. So when you're crafting your back cover copy, don't be afraid to use a few adverbs. Don't go crazy with them. Use them sparingly still, but definitely don't be afraid of them. Adverbs are also a great way to quickly show distance and time. For example, I might say that a punch nearly missed my character's face. It doesn't matter that the punch missed by half an inch or an inch. All that matters is that it nearly missed. In this case, using an adverb is actually going to speed up my pace and keep my story moving, so I might choose that instead of a more specific distance. Same thing goes for time. Also, these adverbs are adding new information. It's showing how close the punch came. It nearly missed, it wasn't way off. When it comes to distance and time, sometimes an adverb is all you need to make your point and move on with the scene. Next, I'd like to share why an editor recommends avoiding adverbs mostly. Adverbs are often a crutch. They're used instead of diving deeper into characters, choosing a more specific phrase, or showing emotion. To eliminate adverbs, you will often have to use more words. It's not a one-to-one -one exchange. Don't be afraid of this. Those words were needed in the first place to be more specific and help your reader better picture your story. That said, you don't need to eradicate all adverbs from your writing. You just need to make sure you're using them when you should be. Adverbs are a tool, and like any other tool in your writer's toolbox, they can be overused or used incorrectly. So when you find yourself using adverbs, ask yourself what new information they're adding to that sentence. If they're not adding any, they might be a filler word. And then ask yourself, do I really want to use this adverb, or would a more specific description of this emotion, or whatever the adverb is revealing, be better? Only you can make that decision. This is about being self-aware and knowing your tendencies. So what are your opinions on adverbs? Share them in the comments below. And for more videos on how to improve your writing, subscribe to Ignited Ink Writing, a channel dedicated to helping authors like you transform your writing so it lingers with your readers, because writing that lingers gets remembered and recommended to others. I'm Caitlin Burvey, editor and writer. To find out more about me, go to www.ignitedinkwriting.com. There you will also find a worksheet on how to use synonyms to build voice. 
This is going to better help you understand the power of word choice. And now it's your turn to avoid adverbs most of the time to ignite your ink.